Concrete is more than a solid substance. It's also a symbol of strength and endurance. A building block for foundations that last, allowing legacies to grow. Look at these teams. Consider their pedigree. The programs they represent. Their history is here, built on a bedrock of pride. They live up to winning traditions, reach the game's highest ground yet again. Through unity of purpose, effort and skill, and motivation that comes from the deepest well. Love for their teammates, their school, and the game. In a stadium that stands on concrete, like the cornerstones of their success. These teams will compete for the NCAA Men's Lacrosse National Championship. We have waited two years to say welcome to Championship Weekend. Virginia and North Carolina, two teams from the ACC, meet for the third time this year in semifinal number one. Carolina, the one seed, Virginia, still the reigning champions. This is the most talented championship weekend field we have seen. The top four seeds in the year of the super team. The top four offenses. Sit down, get ready, and enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. Anish Roth, Quinn Kessnick, Paul Carcaterra will be with us in a moment. Gratitude, we're back. We made it, and uh, these teams have been through an awful lot of an historic spring, and the sports kept us together. The, the sport is a healing, the sport as a medicine game, the um, emotional and physical exertion that these young men have uh, benefited from, and the fans as well at home. This will be the third time Virginia and Carolina play. If it's anything like the first two meetings, this game, even in the rain, will be played at warp speed. Yeah, this is a game that fans, whether you're a lacrosse fan, any sport will enjoy. And it features players like Chris Gray. Okay, he's North Carolina's best player. He's a senior transfer from Boston University. What sets his game apart is versatility. He can take the ball to the net for himself. He's got terrific vision. He can forecast player movement, and he throws terrific assists to his teammates. What's fun about his game, it's creative. It's improv. It's on the fly. It's never planned or orchestrated, very unscripted. He also has an outside shot to keep defenses honest, and he can sting the net from 12 to 15 yards. He's made his teammates better, and Carolina's been unstoppable on offense with Chris Gray as the conductor. 20 and two since Gray transferred from Boston University to Chapel Hill, and the ensemble cast is awfully impressive. Six players on this Carolina roster have at least 20 goals this season. Paul Carcaterra is down in the rain. Paul, Virginia still has the core of that 2019 championship team intact and some new faces too. Well, Anish, the rain will not keep me from smiling today, rest assured. And Virginia is a team full of proven champions, but their brightest star happens to be a freshman by the name of Connor Schellenberger. And Schellenberger's multifaceted game is his calling card. Virginia uses him all over the offensive zone. He can get to the rack from up top, which opens seams for teammates. Players like Ian Laviano come to the party. From X behind, he shakes defenders. He feels pressure. When opposing teams send help, he is slippery with a sixth sense for pay dirt. They use him up top, they use him behind, they use him from the wing. Is there anything number one in white can't do? The answer is no. He's the leading scorer, and he's Virginia's Mr. Unpredictable. Schellenberger, six goals in the quarterfinal route of Georgetown. He is the top scoring freshman in all of Division I. And we mentioned the nucleus from 2019. Matt Moore now an all-time great at Virginia. Jared Connors, a first-team All-American, and the midfielder of the year as a long stick, and Quint Petey Lasala, the top face-off man in this semifinal field. Here we go. Here we go. 
Lasala and Zach Tucci for the opening face-off. It's won by Carolina. Maddie Taylor, Mike McCloskey, Scott McCall, the officials for semifinal number one, third meeting of the season between Virginia and UNC. They split the first two. Carolina co-champions of the ACC back on this stage for the first time since that 2016 championship season. William Perry. Three midfielders for North Carolina. All All-Americans in Chris Gray, his first shot wide. Closest to the ball on a shot that goes out of bounds. Afforded possession. And that's North Carolina's Cole Herbert. In goal for Virginia, Alex Rode. Most outstanding player of that 2019 championship run. Perry spins away from Grayson Soliday, fires too high. Shot clock at 27. Cole Herbert, the freshman, will trigger, starting in place of Tanner Cook. Herbert doubled to Justin Anderson, the 25-year-old, fifth-year senior. Now it's Perry again. Virginia starting out in their man-to-man -man defense. They have tremendous length and range down below. They're starting defenders run, what, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and 6'7". Chris Gray can't get an angle defended well that time by Cade Sosted. Six seconds on the shot clock. A Virginia defense compared to Jurassic Park and Velociraptors last week by Georgetown head coach Kevin Warren. Jacob Kelly has to chuck it into the corner. That's by design. Shot clock violation on North Carolina. Quint, you say, where has Virginia grown the most this season as Carolina goes into its ride? It's been defensively. It's a team that started off the season, and their midfield defense was getting shredded, quite honestly. And at the halfway point of the season, I thought they hit a turning point. And now late in the year, they put Cole Kastner, 39, six foot seven down low. They've really solidified the defense. Jeff Connor for Virginia. He could be an X factor today. 10 goals this year, six against Carolina. Now Matt Moore. He was their best offensive player. In 2019, Connor Schellenberger working from behind, looking to feed Peyton Cormier. It trickles out to Doc Aiken. Highest scoring midfielder in school history. Aiken draws the slide, plays it to the wing, and the reigning champions on the board first. He's a scorer, but when Virginia's offense clicks at another level, Docs Aiken becomes a passer. Everyone knows he likes to get to the rack. You're gonna see a quick slide and a double. Aiken finds Connor, who happens to be a Tar Heel buster. Four goals last time against the Heels. Number four in blue sets his feet, lets it rip. Right past the freshman keeper, Colin Creed. Thought that was an overzealous double team by Carolina's defense on the perimeter, but you know, Aiken's got a reputation as a guy who can sting you from distance. So five goals for Connor now against North Carolina in the last two games. Seven of his 11 goals this season have come against Carolina. And now Virginia with the ride, forcing the turnover. It's the 6-7 Cole Kastner. Uh, he leaves it on the turf, picked up by UNC. Chris Gray's pass intended for Solomon, but backed up. To the conditions today, Clark, you know it's cold down there. It's 50 degrees. That's player friendly, but it rained overnight. A pretty thick natural grass surface. I got to think this game's going to be a little on the sloppy side. Paul, what do you see down below? You know, there's no standing water, so it drained well. There was no tarp overnight. I was really concerned, to be quite honest with you. No standing water. Game two, I think, more of a factor in 
terms of this field getting mucked up in some mud, but I'm watching Chris Gray from behind. He still has those quick feet. I think, though, the crease area, as this game continues on, could be a mud bath. I used to love mud baths. All young lacrosse players love mud baths. Connor McCarthy, the hero of the quarterfinals. 2003, a Virginia goalie by the name of Tillman Johnson. He played some incredible lacrosse in the mud. Carolina is on the board. It's McCarthy who had the game winner in overtime in the quarters against Rutgers. He's on a heater. Heel fans enjoying the rain. He's known as a right-handed shooter from mid-range. Watch him split right down the middle to his left hand as if almost the defense invited him to go there. Little hesitation move gets to a, a strong spot in front of Alex Road. And this is a goaltender, Alex Road, who typically struggles early in games and plays his best ball once he makes a couple initial stops. When you look at McCarthy there, Quint, he's a long, rangy yeah. guy. Virginia dared him to go down the middle. The support That's... wasn't there. I think they gave him his left hand, his off hand, knowing that most of his goals have come with his right. Face-off violation on Virginia. If you get three face-off violations and a half, the opponent goes man up for 30 seconds. Carolina three for three now on the face-offs. That is a turn from what we saw in the regular season. First midfield back on there for North Carolina. Anderson Perry and the freshman Herbert getting the start for Tanner Cook, who's still been slowed since coming back from a lower body injury. Anderson, who became a father earlier this month, and the Virginia defense all over him. But we're going to get a loose ball hold and the shot clock reset on, UV, uh, on Carolina. That's a staple of Virginia's defense. If you stop your momentum as a Dodger and roll back, the double is almost instantaneous. They love that pinch double on rollbacks. Perry down the alley. He was more of a feeder in the quarters and in this tournament. Gray now turned away Herbert with a nice move his shot wide deflected by Kologi there is length on this Virginia defense Kologi 6-4 Sawstead is 6-5 Kastner 6-7 shot that time by Jacob Kelly is saved by Alex Road the quick outlet Ben Ware ran into a roadblock it comes back to Kologi, who shovels it ahead. They have 20 seconds on a change of possession to get it across midfield. I'll tell you, those type of plays in this series in particular, two really fast teams, two aggressive teams, two athletic teams, buckle your chin straps, put in your mouthpiece, because you're going to see that type of physical play between the lines. Both of these teams, gentlemen, are known for their ride. So when you're trying to clear the ball, they're going to come at you fast and furious. Bertrand plays it up top and a rocket wide by Matt Moore. UNC has outshot Virginia 8-2. to two. Charlie Bertrand, he's got Moore again. A little too high. Moore this season, just 4 of 26 shooting in two games against Carolina. Freshman in goal for UNC, Colin Creed, who's been one of the best goalies in America as a true freshman. Cormier with a bouncer, it's blocked. And it's Carolina out of the vortex. Will Bowen, 24 and white. Will Bowen, first team All-American defender and one of the best in the country. Virginia's ride, forcing the turnover. Peter Garno off the scramble. He's got wheels. Something we're going to keep track of, ride backs and the extra possessions that a failed clear 
leads to. I thought it was critical last week for North Carolina in their quarterfinal win over Rutgers. They had nine ridebacks for four goals. So far today, Virginia's ride has teeth. That was the difference last week. UNC's overtime win against Rutgers. They were incredible in the fourth quarter in terms of getting after Rutgers. Their inability to close the deal is the heels in terms of their relentless approach. Schellenberger now off the feed for Macon. Plays it to the wing. Matt Moore looking to feed the crease. And the wet turf helping Virginia avoid a turnover. Jeff Connor, who's got the lone UVA goal. What separates this offense, they have two quarterbacks. Schellenberger and Matt Moore both have more than 30 assists. No other team in the country has that. It gives them a lot of options in terms of matchups. Four against Bowen. Shot clock at eight. You now, Quint, when you watch the two quarterback system with Moore and Schellenberger, they put one behind and one up top. They will rotate Connor Schellenberger at attack. Moore will go to the midfield spot, vice versa. Cormier all the way to the crease, and he scores with two on the shot clock. You've got some speed. You got some tooled players like Schellenberger and Moore. And then you have some crafty Canadians like Peyton Cormier. In terms of his hands, his ability to get underneath and slip defenders, he could be the X factor for Virginia in this championship run. If it's true that time is money, don't you think the real question is how you should spend it? Keep the change, baby. Find the fine life. Hey, what are earthquakes on Mars called? I don't know, Mars quakes? Are eyebrows considered facial hair? Hey, heads up. Why do people say heads up when you should duck? I don't know. Weird. What if the key to never getting locked out is not needing a key? Yeah. That's good. Question everything. We did. It's your journey in the all-new Tucson with Hyundai Digital Key. Bun mayo, chicken pickle, bun. Bun pickle? Bless me! Ooh, it's naked. The Naked Chicken Chalupa, only at Taco Bell. You ready? Let's go. Grab your gear. Cavaliers right off the bat. National Midfielder of the Year, Jared Connors. Doc Saken laying the boom, but it was the Connor Schellenberger show on the offensive. Six for Virginia. Six goals, one assist. Schellenberger was incredible. This was a game for the ages. Rutgers, they brought their A game, and Adam Sherilambides saved his best for last. But at the end of the day, the heels in the fourth quarter. Zach Tucci off the faceoff with the goal, and then in overtime. It was the fifth year transfer from Princeton. Connor McCarthy found just that little seam, and the heels back to the big dance for the first time. 2016. A look at both head coaches, Joe Bresci and Lars Tiffany, both two wins away from their second national titles as head coaches. The quarterfinal round has such pressure associated with it. I felt Carolina was gripping their sticks a little tight. Even Joe Bresci admitted that to us yesterday at practice. Meanwhile, Lars Tiffany did a great job, I thought, end of the year. They had a 21-day break before the NCAA playoffs. He called up Bronco Mendenhall, Virginia's football coach, and they developed a map and a plan. This team peaked last week with a, with a very, very strong effort against the Hoyas. Both coaches had a similar refrain. This game is a player's game. There's so much talent down the field. You've seen each other twice already. A lot of the adjustments will be on the shoulders of the players to make from what they've seen already. 
Here comes Herbert, bounce shot down the alley, wide. Carolina with the backup. Down shots are going to be tricky for these goaltenders. This type of surface favors shooters who can use the earth and skim that ball on a wet grass surface. It's also more difficult for the goalies to get good traction as they're playing in mud. What scares you as a goalie in the weather? Well, if it gets really, really bad, that actually then helps the goal. If, if everybody is caked in mud and shooters can't get good traction, they can't you know, get that big time torque behind their shots. But right now, they, the, sh the shooter has the advantage because of a wet surface and everyone still has relatively good traction. Everybody can still cut. That's true, Quinn. But I would say to your point later in the game, if this is a monsoon, the shafts become really slippery for the offensive guys. The pockets become like waterlogged, right? You bagged out in terms of how deep your pocket is. You're not used to that quick release when your pocket is so wet. So something to certainly keep an eye on as this game progresses in the weather. When will we see that shift from shooter advantage to goalie advantage? Well, we'll answer that question, but first, a change on a call. Yes, that's the right call. It is North Carolina ball. Virginia turns it over trying to clear. Possession had not been established when that ball went out of bounds. I'll tell you, both of these teams ride, okay? That's a four check. That, that is a full court press. Carolina likes to do a 10-man ride where they pull their goalie. Same with Virginia. Virginia's is a more man-based. They're gonna get in your face, almost like the old Georgetown Hoyas in basketball when they just make it a man-on-man a -man game and you have to dribble the ball up against John Thompson and his team to make it a 110-yard contest. Four turnovers so far for UNC, but they've won all four face-offs. Virginia dominated the face-offs in the two regular season meetings. Chris Gray did not have a goal last week. McCarthy defended well by Chris Merle. McCarthy, the lone UNC goal. Here comes Henry Schertzinger. The second midfield for Carolina. Trippy, Schertzinger, McCarthy. You'll see Lance Tillman. Dangerous. They are. Got eight goals last week from non-starters. Gray stings the corner. Fading away against the 6-5 Sawstead, and we're tied at two. Sloppy play in the middle of the field and turnovers are really gonna set the table for what's next. Long outlet pass into traffic. The refs looked at that one for a long time. Ultimately, the heels got the ball. This is masterful. The low shooting jumper by record-breaking Chris Gray. Most points in a season in Tar Heel history. He's so crafty, Quint. When you see him plant his foot and just release from the defensive pressure and then in the same motion use his footwork to elevate and sting that low angle shot that was amazing the acc player of the year one of cool, five finalists i loved it i loved it for okay. the yeah, tour his dad yeah, is stuff, a that's... retired police officer living on the the north shore of suffolk county i talked to him during the pandemic where he he said he walked his dog rosie took him took rosie for long walks in the morning to stay sane. That was a year ago from right now. And on his mind was a chance to take Carolina to championship weekend. And here he is on the big stage. Also did something that Anish loves to do. Binged on Netflix. The movie guy, Anish Shroff. I thought you were gonna say swim. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tawarta on the highest individual honor in college lacrosse. Three of the five finalists in this game as Krieg makes his first save. It's an easy one for Krieg. Freshman who's been impervious to pressure. Got the young man. Finalist, excuse me, Krieg, for the Tawarta in the semifinalist field.
sheet to see what Justin Anderson, 21 right here in white, has got up his sleeve today. I thought he was amazing last week in the quarterfinals. Tanner Cook in there. He was a regular on that first midfield with Anderson and Perry, 77 in whites. Returned in the quarters after missing a couple of games. Gives them a different look on offense with his size and his stick handling. Here comes Perry. Ooh, top shelf on road! William Perry, sub-zero! Shot selection is critical today. This is a maybe shot. Fading away, not much angle. Krieg seals the deal, he shuts it off. Ouch, look at this shot. Top shelf, we've seen now two low angle rips from almost the same exact spot. Chris Gray, then William Perry. But I'll tell you what's different about Perry. He loves to be up top, Quint. You don't see him invert a ton, but he had that short stick matchup. He used that quick change what? of direction and the Down. high riser. Yeah, the level Rose. change. The level change, Kark, is the difference there. These goalies can save bullets if they're straight bullets, but if you give them a level change, that's a low release to a high location or vice versa. A high release to a low location. That's a difference maker for a shooter. We have talked to opposing coaches throughout the season who have played these teams. And, you know, the refrain has been the talent, the shot-making ability. You're watching pros out on this field and with COVID and guys having an extra year of eligibility. We've never seen a championship weekend field with this much talent. Connor Schellenberger, no shots today after six goals in the quarters. Schellenberger feeding inside. What a pass. What a save by Krieg. What a save. What a pass by Schellenberger. That sequence was amazing. You saw the elite vision from Schellenberger with the freshman Krieg. Wow. Now the ride by Virginia. And Carolina able to get it across the midfield line before that shot clock hits 60. Final 90 seconds of this opening quarter. When they last played, he had seven goals in the first five minutes. A little more low scoring this time. We've got the elements, cloudy skies, some rain coming down. Weather, not the usual for this time of the year. Sub 50 degree temperatures. Lance Tillman, four goals against Rutgers in the quarters. Had five all season entering the game. Carolina's got three unassisted goals. Seems like Virginia has been slow on some of their double teams. Sawstead against Gray. Short stick matchup here for Carolina. Tillman against Saladay. Looking on the doorstep for Trippy. Virginia ball, 42 seconds to go. You know, Tillman is a guy, zero and white for Carolina. Quickness is his secret sauce, Quint. And on a track like this, you saw him at Hofstra. No one could keep up with him. They call him Dance Tillman because of his feet. But on a wet surface, I'm not sure. A Ooh. chance against the ride. Soliday, that was a good shot. And it is a shot, so Virginia has the backup. Empty net that time. The 10-man ride. Lacrosse has played 10 on 10 in the full field. The goalie comes out to cover an attackman, and an extra defender bumps up field essentially leaving an empty net. Xander Dixon, he's dangerous on the inverts. And a crease violation on Virginia. Final ticks, opening quarter. The one seed, Carolina on top, 3-2. Quarter number one expires. Connor and Cormier, the scoring for Lars Tiffany in Virginia. McCarthy, the quarterfinal hero, got the scoring started for UNC. Gray and Perry, the veterans. 
giving Carolina a 3-2 lead. Championship weekend, folks, is back. Carolina's freshman goalie. Uh, ignorance is bliss. This is a situation like a hockey goalie. He goes from pipe to pipe. Six foot by six foot is a lacrosse goal. It's 36 square feet. It's just as wide as a hockey goal. And this move here, when he goes from near pipe to far post, look at him shuffle and shut it down. The ability to move your feet, to play your angles well, and to take away high. I mean, that is highway robbery. He sports a mohawk. He hums songs during the game while in cage. Clark, you and I hang around Quint. We know goalies are a little odd. And you had a goalie that you grew up with, too. Yeah, I shared a bedroom with one. The biggest lunatic I know, Brian Carcaterra, who followed Quint to Johns Hopkins. But I love Krieg's demeanor. You, you want a guy like that where the moment doesn't feel too big, right? And that's why he's been able to capture this moment. It's been incredible. When he arrived this year, Thursday night, March 11th, the first ACC Network game on the big stage. Had a huge day. Oh, yeah. But there were moments in that game where he pointed to his chest, gave up a goal, and said, that's on me. He took ownership as a first-year freshman. 20 saves that night. I, I love his body language, his maturity, and his ability to, to put in the extra time taking shots. For sure. Hey, gentlemen, I just spoke to Kevin Underside, who's the defensive coordinator. He said he thinks the track is holding up well. He said the grass is really thick. Not too big of a concern yet. 20 saves for Krieg in that game. Virginia, 62 shots. Connor Schellenberger with a small window slips it in past Krieg to tie it at three. It's like where's Waldo? Finding Schellenberger on the offensive set. He operates up top. He operates behind. When Krieg robbed Laviano, it was a next level tight pass. This time he takes it to the rack on his own. He feels the defensive pressure behind him, Quint. So instead of rolling back, get top side, young man. Macri's in decent position there, but his stick is trailing the shooter. And so Schellenberger's able to free up his right hand. That's to the top side. Defenders are taught to sit down there and what's called a V-hold. That is put their stick in front of the attackman as he comes upfield. Schellenberger told us this week he's been helped so much by Matt Moore as LaSala could not hold on to the ball. Here comes Alex Bresci, the nephew of head coach Joe Bresci. Hey, this young guy, 90 in white, Blake Gable, has come on from nowhere this season. As and he is making critical plays in the middle of the field the last couple of weeks. Mangy and White, Blake Gable, a freshman from Maryland. Hard you not to see. spot him. He's got black cleats. He's the only guy with black cleats on the field. But well, he grew up in Maryland. Sykesville. Played at BL with Logan Wisnowski, so you see in game two. The source of all great ties, boys left. Yeah, lost, the lost and found is your personal haberdasher. They're good. Chris Gray, he's got a goal today. Highest scoring season in Tar Heel history. Justin Anderson, he and wife Priscilla had a baby girl, Scarlett June, at the beginning of the month. It was the Friday before the first round game against Monmouth, and Anderson scored the first goal of the NCAA tournament the very next day after becoming the father. Here's the double, John Fox, the captain, helping for Virginia. From the outside, William Perry, his second.
How do you handle a double team? Watch Chris Gray. He steps away, frees up his hands, and his eyes are up. Wow. This is Chris Gray in a nutshell. It's never about him. He's so selfless and lets the game come to him every single time. This is an offense that has a star in Chris Gray. Lars Tiffany knows that. But Chris Gray isn't the type of star that has to do everything on his own. He has the pieces to the puzzle around him, and you just saw a next level through pass. UNC won the first four faceoffs in this game. Virginia has won the last five. Your Lars Tiffany, the frustration there is decisions. Let's make good decisions. That's, you know, playing defense in the gray area is the challenge. Lacrosse has really evolved. It's like rolling out marbles on ice and the pieces move so fast. The defense is, when do we double? When do we stay home? Matt Moore going top side. He dusted Will Bowen and we're tied at four. This goal tells me a lot. Breaking down all the film on Matt Moore. Traditional righty Dodger loves to go up the right side of the field. This time he goes to the left and they're daring him. Will Bowen is daring him to use his left. Watch Will Bowen's hips there. That invites Moore to get to the rack lefty with a low angle shot. Wasn't it last night over pizza you said, ah, Moore's got no left. <laughs> look at look at that. And Clark, that's a great point, because Bowen was really shading him. He was kind of opening the door, saying, you know, if it's there, take it. Prove it to me that you can beat me left-handed. Now what do you do if you're Bowen? You got to play him straight up, right? You have to. You have to. And, and Moore, Moore's a guy, obviously he has a left hand, but his sixth sense and his instincts just bring him back to his right hand so much. And he's an athlete that can do that. But as you get to the next level defender, a guy like Will Bowen, who's a first team All-American, you have to approach it a little bit differently, right? Because you're not gonna be able to beat him with, with a bunch of re-dodges there. You had that open invite lefty, and he capitalized. Moore has adjusted in the games against Carolina. The first game, he was shooting two for 15. Second game, two for 11, but he had six assists. Charlie Bertrand saved Krieg. Carolina maneuvering now against the Virginia ride. Parker Alexander able to clear. Alexander ahead of steam. Flips it over to Brian Cameron. NBA playoffs, first round, game three. Sixers, Wizards, 7 Eastern. On ESPN, Jazz, Grizzlies at 9.30 Eastern. Chance to see John Morant, John Morant and Donovan Mitchell. Cameron with a right-handed shot. He's a lefty. Park has to be loving this. All these uh, one-hand dominant players going to their offhand. You implying something? No, no, never. There's Henry Schertzinger, saved by road. Now Virginia has to get it across midfield before the shot clock hits 60. Cole Kastner, they call him Project 39. A late season revelation to the point that Tony Bennett has interest in having Kastner play basketball at Virginia. UNC able to win it back. Here comes Gray. I'll tell you, those are stingers now because you got to dig in. Gray thought about stepping in a one, absorbs a check. Plays it back to McCarthy, low to high, road to save, he's out of the cage, able to suction. With these conditions, you can't assume that all these 15, 20-yard passes will be complete. You really got to fight through as a player. Jared Connors, 28 in blue. Now he may hang around on offense depending on the personnel. Skilled with that long stick. 
A multiple time All American had 18 career goals to his name. He'll come out to set the pick. Doc Aiken. Aiken gets free. Shot altered. Good trail check. Sean Morris. Tied at four from Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Semi-final number one, Duke and Maryland later today. Aiken's got the short stick matchup. Shot clock at 20. Moore, the skip pass for Schellenberger. And that'll be over and back. Quick restart. Solomon for UNC. That was over and back. They're supposed to get a quick restart, and uh, looked like Solomon may have gone too quickly. Here comes Tanner Cook. Skips it to the far side, saved by Rode, his best. They got numbers here in the trailer. Schellenberger probing, skip pass, save Krieg. Rebound is loose. Schellenberger eats it up on the doorstep looking for Peel. Anderson looked to have knocked it out of bounds, but it'll be Carolina ball. This is the pace that we expected in this game. Okay, the fans love it. This is what this game offers. Got to love the shot clock being instituted back in 2019. You got two teams who won't back down. They, they want to pressure the ball. They want to disrupt in all scenarios. Full gas on field level. Right next to the action. Full gas foot on the pedal. Both of these teams. Cut the brakes. Cook's got a short stick matchup. Alex Rode devours another one. He's he's flammable. Rode will get hot and he'll seal that goal up. We've seen it. He can start slow and usually he gets better. Seven saves for Rode, who's better than 60% in his last four NCAA tournament games. Unsettled, Matt Moore, good defense, on the rebound, Virginia. Charlie Bertrand, the Division II transfer. Can you feel it? I'll tell you, both these goalies standing strong. Krieg, the lefty freshman, matches up down below with some rebound control. Alex Rode, he can heat up. Remember back to the 2019 championship game when he was the MVP? Eyes wide open. Bertrand, a 200 goal plus score in his career. He's got the Cavaliers, the defending champs, up by one. One for me, and one for me. Introducing buy one, get one for just a dollar at Burger King. Grab a flame grilled Whopper or Impossible Whopper and mix or match it with your favorites for an extra buck. Go ahead, you deserve it. Buy one, get one for one dollar. Your way, way better. Each of us has a different story. But this family isn't about where you come from, it's about where you're going. We might not recognize each other walking down the street, but driving down it, we recognize in each other the same spirit of adventure. There's only one family and one community quite like ours. Jeep, there's only one. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on select 2021 Jeep Compass, Renegade, and Cherokee models. Plus, get three years no-cost maintenance with the Jeep Wave program. 
This is Hal. This is Hal's heart. It's been broken and put back together. Five players in school history with 100 goals and 100 career assists. They're looking at that shoulder and they ended up taking him inside. He is their superstar. Alex Road, meanwhile, has been unbelievable on this big stage. Two years ago, his play in the semifinals had a huge hand in Virginia celebrating in a dog pile on Monday. He's got seven saves so far. Talked about his ability to potentially start slow. He's, he's never great in the first five minutes of games, but, but it's almost like he, he needs to, you know, knock off the tension involved, and then he settles in. He's broken out of his shell off the field as well. Tremendous maturation led by head coach yeah. Lars Tiffany. He can be goofy, he can be funny. He's opened up. He's now actually talking during practice. He'll return for a fifth year to Charlottesville. He saw Matt Moore left shoulder. He's in the locker room. If one team can absorb their quarterback to be out of the lineup, it's Virginia. They have two with Connor Schellenberger. So they throw him back in attack. He's behind it, Axel. He's just in their offensive huddle. Sean Kerwin, the offensive coordinator, wants Docs Aiken initiating because Anish and Quinn, he's going to get a short stick here. So the offense will start with Docs, and they have Schellenberger in more spot behind. Jack Simmons, the junior, out on that midfield unit with Aiken. And Jeff Connor, Schellenberger. Peyton Cormier, his second. The big Canadian came in top five nationally in goals. 6-4 Virginia. Said he could be an X factor, but look at the pass by Schellenberger. He is only a freshman. He's a first-team All-American at the midfield, but he is a true quarterback, a distributor, a facilitator with so much in his toolbox. That pass was crisp. It was on a dime right to the stick of Cormier. It allowed him to set up the dodge and ultimately celebrate. The hitch and go at the tail end, the pump and go, freezes the defender, creates enough separation to free up his left-handed shot. And they have that time, Quint, because of how fast of a pass that was from Schellenberger. 13 multi-goal games now for Cormier. Meanwhile, Virginia has now won eight consecutive face-offs. Here's Connors. 18 career goals. Make it 19 for the midfielder of the year. Four unanswered by Virginia. LaSala wins the whistle and the initial clamp. It's a massive scrum. And there's Connors. He just beats his man to it. Look at him shield his stick. Pump fake keeps that point defender off of him. And then the accuracy through practice to nail a mid-range shot on the run. I Means so many skills wrapped into one player. Amazing. You know, you're asking, how is a long stick midfielder the National Midi of the Year. This is the first time 2021 since 2011 when Syracuse's Joel White was the last long stick midfielder to be midfielder from a national perspective, player of the year. That's why. Dangerous in transition. A human Roomba on ground balls. And that game changing long stick Midi, a big part of Lars Tiffany's concoction. Go back to his teams at Brown. Final four in 2016. They had two with Larkin Kemp and Alec Tullett. It starts with ground balls. That has been a Virginia staple since the 1970s. Something that Dom Stars, their former coach, emphasized. Lars Tiffany. Virginia has annually been one of the best in the business in that category, and that's why they're owning this portion of this game. 
Peyton Cormier's got two. Schellenberger, a goal and an assist. Virginia's outscored Carolina 5-1 in this second quarter. Xander Dixon now. Schellenberger, a Peter Garno. Rifles it past Krieg. Eight for the reigning champions, bringing the heat in quarter number two. Carolina's going to have to get a timeout here. Joe Bresci's going to have to use it. This game's, this game's slipping away. Possession is nine-tenths the law. In lacrosse, it's determined by ground ball play. Ball's on the carpet. Matt Wright, 20 and white, has it for a second with a great hustle from the Cavaliers. And they emerge from the pile with possession. Who passes it? Schellenberger. Who shoots it? Garno sprays the back of the net. There are three big-time righty shooters on this team. Schellenberger, Aiken, and Garno. A timeout by North Carolina. Colin Craig needed a splash guard. Virginia shooting six for 10 in this second quarter. Five straight goals since North Carolina took a 4-3 lead. We remind you tomorrow, NCAA lacrosse coverage continues. It's the Women's Championship. BC with a colossal upset of North Carolina. They will face Syracuse. Gary Gates' team lost its two best players, beat an undefeated Northwestern team in the semis, an all-ACC final, and we get to see the best player in college lacrosse, Charlotte North. Charlotte North is the best female player that I can remember watching. Her highlights are amazingly dominant. Her shooting ability is like nothing. You could put her in a, in, in a men's uniform and, and she can shoot equally to many of these midfielders. I mean, she has been so dominant, Kark. She's unbelievable, the creativity, the passion for the game. And I remember this off season, it was early January. She's from Dallas, Texas. She was in the Connecticut area looking to get some reps. So we got together. I met her at Wilton High School. It was probably 28 degrees that day. We shot for about an hour and a half. Unbelievable what she did that day in terms of just selling me on her complete game and her passion. She is inspiring a new generation. I've been saying it all season long. She's the best player in college lacrosse, period. Let's do it. Kill Meanwhile, for right, North down. Carolina to get back into this game, it's got to start at the faceoff X where Virginia has won nine in a row. Make it ten. And this is what UVA can do to you, Quint, with Petey LaSala. Another unsettled opportunity. Formier retreats. The brown balls and faceoffs. I think on offense, Virginia's doing a nice job of reacting to what Carolina's D does, okay? If they're double teaming, we become a great passing team. If they're slow to go, we can score isolation on assisted goals as well. Aiken, Magellan's around the crease. Now back to Schellenberger. Three points in this first half. Matt Moore still not back for Virginia. Went into the locker room after they were looking at his shoulder. Jeff Connors got his man hung up. Inside roll's not there. Flag is down. First penalty marker of the game. Mike, out your way, Mike. Guys, guys, clear this area. Coach, I got a hand over here. Boss on white, 31 white, 30 second technical, push. Push. It's on the All-American Connor Marr, the short stick D midi, a push with possession. There it is. And a timeout by Lars Tiffany. 3.39 to go in this opening half. A five-goal blitz for Virginia. My guess is it's an odd timeout, but with Matt Moore not on the extra man, I'm sure there were some personnel decisions that caught him off guard there. 
Kark, this Virginia scoring run. It started with Matt Moore using the left. Yeah, they just have so much in terms of their versatility where they attack you. The ride was relentless. It allowed Bertrand to come to the party, but Cormier now with two goals. He used that hard plant foot. And then the big dog, Jared Connors, delivers a monster goal in transition. Garno, no shot for Colin Krieg, the freshman, Quint. Quint, when you watch Colin Krieg, is he seeing the ball well right now? Well, he's not getting very much help in this quarter. I mean, it started with just a bad luck ricochet play. When that, when that ball was blocked by, by the Carolina defense and bounced directly into the cross of Charlie Bertrand, that's just an unlucky break in, in, in a big game, and, and you got to shake that off. Krieg's got to find his best body posture. He's got to find his, his, his positive mindset. Next shot matters. You're clearing your mind. It's, a, it's a, a mindset of neutrality, whether you made a big save or gave up a big goal. It's the next one that matters. Defensively, especially from the midfield defenders, they, they, they got to pick up, pick up the tempo, tempo right now. Carolina's getting beat on loose balls. Look at him, singing, talking to himself. Got to, you got to get a good song stuck in your head for a big game like this, Anish. If you look at the offensive set now for Virginia, this is where they have the versatility. So no Matt Moore, you have Schellenberger behind, and the new wrinkle in this offense right now will be Garno and putting Laviano at the three. So Garno's up top. Doc Sankin. And we get another whistle. Got a clock issue. We have limited video replay. That's what he's doing right now. Yeah? Most of it has to do Not with... Reset. Not a reset. Not a reset. That's why they're over clock there. Clock issues at the end of quarters to see if... Yeah, the ball went in. And he talked about that official, Matty Palin, right there with their red armband. Three-time national champion goalie for the dominant Syracuse Orangemen. 88, 89, and 90. Wore the bright orange football pants. And I wish somebody would reincarnate those because those were the coolest things ever. <laughs> Schellenberger probing... Virginia has not been great on the man up. In fact, against Carolina in two games, one for 10. And the UNC scored multiple man down goals when Virginia was man up. That really turned the first meeting between these two when statistically Virginia was dominant. Reed made 20 saves. Cormier. To Schellenberger, the double team timed perfectly. Alex Bresci pushing for North Carolina, part of that defensive midfield. It's been a while since we've seen UNC with the ball on offense. Virginia held Georgetown to three goals last week. North Carolina averages 16 plus a game, tops in the country. Anderson, tornadoes to the ground, no flag. Transition opportunity, but Virginia turns it over. Chaos in the middle of the field. And we're going to get a loose ball push on UVA. Time in a few minutes. Chris Cotter and company in our Bristol studios to break this first half down and get you set for semifinal number two Duke and undefeated Maryland. Here's Lance Tillman. Now Tanner Cook on the short stick, switching hands. A natural lefty. Double team, triple teamed. 
It's on the ground, bodies flying, Virginia out of the frenzied vortex. Soliday gets past Gray, shoots it high, and now North Carolina's gonna have a couple of offensive players run off quickly. A minute 12 to go, opening half. Virginia's defense, terrific last week against the Hoyas, again today, the double team at goal line extended, perfect execution. They, they seem to be doing a good job of stopping the ball carrier's momentum and then doubling on the opposite shoulder. And a timeout by Virginia with less than a minute to go. A championship weekend is back after not having it last year. Well, we taped a video last year, what we missed about May, about a year ago at this time. Now we have the top four seats. This was the year of the super team. And the four best teams made it the championship weekend. Carolina, Duke, Maryland, and Virginia. Quint, you've been covering this event longer than any of us. Can you remember when, we, when we've had this much talent concentrated at championship weekend? Absolutely not. It's never happened. I mean, you look, look at a Duke team that you'll watch at 2.30 square off against Maryland. Duke's got 16 graduate students on their roster. Okay, most of these teams have basically essentially an extra class. As we see Matt Moore emerging from the locker room after having his shoulder looked at. You know, Carolina's starting midfield. They're all 50-year seniors. So that's the rarity here. It's almost like there's an extra class. All these rosters are big. They're 55, 60-man rosters, which, which, is, uh, which is historic. Kark in that second to semifinal. We'll see Jared Bernhardt and Michael Sowers, two of the best individual talents that have played college lacrosse, period. Unbelievable. You look at Sowers, he's... Second all-time in the NCAA in terms of career points. Shattered every Princeton record possible in three years. Bernhardt's the school's all-time leading scorer at Maryland. A tradition-rich program that had greats like Frank Urso and Matt Rambo. But when you think of this combination of teams, the thing that's so interesting to me, yes, we have the four top teams. Gentlemen, in this Final Four championship weekend, but every one of them was tested to the brink. Virginia had to come from behind, two goals against Bryant. Duke, overtime against Loyola. Maryland, overtime against Notre Dame. Carolina, overtime against Rutgers. You saw Matt Moore make his way back to the Virginia sideline, not on the field. He was in the huddle, he came late. His teammates were jazzed. I'd be surprised if you don't see him in the second half. The way he ran in and embraced his teammates, he looks like he's going to be good to go. Charlie Bertrand, a two-time national player of the year at D2 Merrimack. And Bertrand with his second of this national semifinal. 236 career goals for 41. Uh, he's a man. This is all about strength because he is well guarded. Watch him shoot through this defensive posture, running himself at an angle, not much there. Krieg struggles with this release. For some reason, he doesn't see it coming out of the pocket. He drops his hands low. It goes straight over his forehead. A 6-0 run for Virginia. The number one seed on the ropes. It's 9-4. The reigning national champions have taken control in this second quarter. And another face-off won by UNC. They've dominated the X after losing the first four. Four seconds out of bounds to Carolina. Send this towards the goal. Got nothing to lose. UNC does just that, and the first half comes to an end. Matt Moore missed a chunk of it for Virginia, one of the best in school history. It didn't matter. Connor Schellenberger, the redshirt freshman, continues to play at a high level. Cormier, Bertrand, Virginia finding scoring everywhere. 
Jared Connors has a long stick. 6-0 run. I thought it started with the play of Alex Rode, honestly, their goalie. And then Petey LaSala winning faceoffs. The great wing play with the ground balls. They had a massive possession edge in that second quarter. They caught a couple breaks. The next thing you know, they're shooting the lights out. 6-0 run by the Cavs. Down to Paul. Coach, what was the difference in terms of finding your offensive punch in that second quarter? Having a ball. Boy, Petey LaSala, how many ground balls does Grayson Saladay have today? And then Jerry Connors getting some and getting in transition going. So, um, you know, Alex Rowe got some bunch of big saves there in the second quarter. He's getting hot. And uh, Sean Kerwin's dialing up some great offensive looks. We saw Matt Moore go to the locker room. He came back and joined the huddle late in that second quarter. What are your expectations in terms of him in the second half? Oh, he's on. He's on. He's, he's got checked out. Matt Moore's a gamer. He's a warrior. Thank you, Coach. Lars Tiffany mentioned the ground ball play of Grayson Soliday. Seven in that first half. That's a big number. He's a short stick D midi. Virginia held the highest scoring team in the country scoreless for almost 13 minutes to close that first half. Chris Cotter and the crew in the studio. Take it away, fellas. Thank you, Anish, here in studio with one of the great close defenders of all time and a heck of a coach, too, at Johns Hopkins. Two-time national champion as a coach, won a national title as a player. Speaking of two national championships, this young man right here won two at Virginia to go along with the Tawaritson Award. Chris Cotter in studio alongside Matt Ward. Dave Petramala, uh, you guys look like you could still play. I mean, Coach, you look like you could still grab that long pole and get out there. All the paddle boarding you've been doing in Chicago obviously is doing, doing some good work. Speaking of which, uh, Virginia in this game, and you heard Coach Tiffany talk about it, Coach, possessions have been huge. They're winning at the faceoff, but they're also winning the ball in the middle of the field for ground balls. Yeah, the name of this game right now is possessions. You look at faceoffs, and uh, Carolina wins the first Florida game, and then Virginia rattles off 11 in a row. That's uh, equals possessions. You look at ground balls, and Virginia now is up 20, 28 to 15. Every one of those loose balls, every one of those faceoffs equals a possession, which makes it more challenging for Carolina. Their offense sits around, gets a little tight, and it allows Virginia to go on a run. So I think that's a huge difference in the first half. Matt Moore right here went out with the shoulder injury, getting the goal. You saw him come back, Wardo, at the end of that first half. So that's good news for Virginia, too. Yeah, and in Virginia, it's these extra possessions that lead to offensive opportunities. And here, your reigning midi of the year, Connors, takes that shot, the off to off look Krieg on the post, and then put it to the far post. But a lot of these aren't clean wins. They're the, the wings coming in at 50-50 ground balls that are all coming up Virginia, especially there late in the second quarter. Uh, I, I would agree. The other piece is Alex Rhodes. Alex Rhodes started a little slow, and we're talking about possessions. Every save that ends up in a clear equals another possession for Carolina, uh, for Virginia. Yeah, here's Alex Rhodes, and he's Mr. May. I mean, he did it in 2019 when they won the national title. He just seems to step up in May, and he's doing it again this time. Yeah, the last time there was an NCAA championship weekend, he was the MVP. A little slow start, but since then he's been lights out and credit Virginia's defense they're gonna be slow to slide the first three UNC goals were unassisted since then they've locked down and they've really forced some low angle shots and, and Rhodes stepped up in cage on the other side Krieg we I, as I'm watching some of these goals beat him I'm asking you is how much of that is on Krieg and it sounds like to me your response is not much that goalie can do when you're getting great shots like that no not at all I actually agree with Matt what you what you're seeing is not a lot of sliding and Carolina has not been interested in sliding and creating offense for Virginia. And what's happening is it's not about, you know, are, are the defenders beat? It's about where the shots are coming from on the field and the shots that these guys are getting either with time and room with, from a good spot or on the run from a good spot. Tough to ask a goalie to make those saves. Yeah, it's been a great first half for Virginia. 9-4, the Hoos with the lead. They've scored six goals in a row to take that lead. When we come back, we'll look forward to game two of our doubleheader today. Semi-final action between Duke and Maryland. We'll give a preview coming up. Absolutely thrilling quarterfinal games here in South Bend. And our semifinal field is set. 
Our Super Team semifinals continues about a half hour after our game right now with Maryland taking on Duke. And Matt, when you talk about superstars, Jared Bernhardt, nation's leading scorer, he's pretty much unstoppable right now. He has been the best player all season, and he's only getting better. There has not been an athlete like him in college lacrosse in some time. I know we've had a lot of great ones, but he's on another level with his explosiveness. And what I love about his game this year is he's put it all together. He's always been the great athlete, but now it's his shooting. Taking that one low to high, the, the question mark here, falling towards the sideline with the perfect placement. Again, it's just been an absolute masterclass of a season for him. To me, he is the one player in the country you want to give the ball to at the end of the game to take over and make that big play. Let's not forget about Michael Sowers, too, from Duke. Yeah, I'm not sure how you can compare both these guys. They're both terrific, but Michael Sowers has been a quarterback since the day he arrived on a college campus, and now what he's done is gone to Duke and changed them. You see here, he, he's not only a great feeder, but he's changed his game a little bit. He's playing more without the ball, and he's dodging and attacking the goal, putting a lot of pressure on defensive coordinators. We're seeing three to our on finalists this weekend. Chris Gray right now in action at North Carolina. He and his mates have some work to do in the second half, trailing by five. Got Jared Bernhardt, Michael Sowers coming up in game two this afternoon. Tomorrow at noon on ESPNU, the two teams that were unbeaten coming into the semifinals were vanquished. So it's BC and Syracuse, Charlotte North versus the Emmas. Should be fun to watch. Second half should be fun from our game as well. Connor Schellenberger, a goal and a couple of helpers in that first half. Virginia up five, second half face coming up. Virginia closed the opening half on a 6-0 run. The Cavaliers held North Carolina scoreless for almost the final 13 minutes of the first half. 9-4 UVA one half away from advancing to Monday's championship. And Ishraf Quint Kesnik. Q, we watched a elite, dominant championship caliber performance by Virginia in that first half. And it, and it ensconced basically all levels, whether it was goaltending, defensive play, face-offs, shooting, it was a little bit of everything, and it was awful. Very, very impressive. And Alex Rode in the cage set the tone. And he made five stops in that second quarter. I thought he played great late stages of the first quarter and then into the second quarter, allowing his defense to get comfortable. Angle play good, quick hands, vision was on. Petey LaSalla, 11 straight face-off wins. He's been a buzzsaw for the Cavaliers' offense in terms of creating opportunities, Quentin. I thought Virginia won some battles in the middle of the field, too. Physical on the ride or on the wings of face-offs, double teams. Timing was precise. Now the face-off numbers skewed in favor of Virginia. North Carolina facing a halftime deficit for the first time this season. Paul, you talked to Joe Bresci. What'd he tell you? Well, solving Petey LaSala is the first priority in terms of getting the ball. He said offensively, though, they're panicking. 0 for 9 shooting in that second quarter. Defensively, expect Carolina to slide earlier. He said they have to support the matchups in terms of really creating some help for their defense and not allowing Virginia to score off the dodge. But Bresci knows when you're dealing with LaSala, he is the type of player when he gets yeah. on a run, we witness greatness from 23 and blue. In the second meeting against Carolina, LaSala won 15 of the final 16 faceoffs. And Virginia wins the opening draw of quarter number three. Look, I see it more as the wing dominance. Jared Connors, who came up with that loose ball. That was a 50-50, three-man scrap. And it's 28 in blue who comes up with it. Soliday, the winger, 32. He's got seven ground balls. Kark, rain a factor early. It feels as if the rain has abated. It has. And you know what? I'm actually pretty shocked at how well this field has held up. They did not put a tarp on it overnight. Teams practiced yesterday, Division II and Division Three teams, when the rain started coming. This has been outstanding in terms of 
of how the water has been absorbed through this thick grass track. This is a thick natural grass surface and elements like this, it's paid off being thick. Thick with a K or two C's? K, come on. Doc's Aiken shot blocked. Oh! Flag down. <laughs> Multiple flags on the field. Number six. Six blue. See the the roughness. See the One minute. Maddie. That's Cole Herbert to the freshman. Yeah, this is eye catching. Watch this. Right to left. Aiken catches Cam Macri under the neck. Wow. Whew. Aiken, who uh, Doc Aiken, excuse me, flirted with playing college football at Villanova, and then at the last second, kind of bailed on that and came back to uh, Charlottesville. So an opening for North Carolina, six on five for a minute. UNC 38 percent on the extra man, and did William Perry three and white, one of the great EMO shooters of all time. He's got 28 career extra man goals. There's Perry, plays it to the wing. Skip pass comes to Perry. Gray swims inside, shovels it back behind the back. Tanner Cook, ball is loose near the crease and it's scooped up by Scott Bauer. Was that the shot that you wanted there? Oh, I was okay with that. That was amazing playmaking from, from the backhanded pass to, to the shot. Now the ride. Virginia's got to get it over. Road. And that will be a turnover. Back to even strength. Besides face-offs. What's Carolina's path back into this game? Offensively, on too many possessions, I, I think they have non-ball handlers doing the dodging. Get the ball to your threats. Justin Anderson, whether it's Perry or Gray. Here's Connor Moore, the All-American. Chris Gray increasing his angle, and he's got his second to the ACC Player of the Year. doesn't like creativity, Anish. Chris Gray with a shovel pass earlier in the possession. Tanner Cook back in the lineup. That almost drops. But to get back in this game, I think Carolina has to match Virginia in the middle of the field. That's creativity at its best. You think about Connor Marr, right? You think about Grayson Soliday, right? He's been the equalizer with the seven ground balls. You need Connor Marr, you need Matt Wright to match the Jared Connors, Grayson Soliday duo. And Marr steps up big that time. First goal in more than 15 minutes for North Carolina. The number one scoring offense in the country. And now Tucci, the face off win. It was Tucci's goal against Rutgers in the quarters that swung the pendulum in favor of UNC. Chris Gray, four and white, senior transfer from Boston University. He's got another year, he's coming back to Chapel Hill. I think he understood coming out of the locker room how important the first five minutes of the third quarter will be. Nikki Solomon now, the junior out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Solomon rolls inside, stick checked away. Behind the back, Gray, it's loose in front. Bodies flying, and it's Peel out of the scramble. goals today the big Canadian plays it back to Matt Moore back in there for Virginia after coming out of the game in the first half 
Moore's got his man hung up. Working on Bowen, shoots wide. Virginia the backup. Virginia's offense really turned the corner this year. When the season started, they were playing hero ball. Isolation dodges. Uh, the ball wasn't spinning or moving from teammate to teammate. Somewhere along the line, about a month into the season, gosh, their offense sets really, really changed. Great ball movement, spacing, sharing. Ian Laviano turned away. There's the double. Laviano lost his stick. Carolina gets the ball. And Q, to your point, Matt Moore was very honest with us. He said, when we get stagnant, that's on me. He's got to be the facilitator. They're at their best you know, when their power dodgers are operating in their happy places. But then the ball is changing fields. There's McCarthy, the quarterfinal hero. Off to Gray. Not there. He had him. He had Rhodes beat. He dropped the stick down low. Road matched up. You can see the two, the two talking to one another after the shot. Yeah, Gray normally will drop his left plant foot and then come up on a little bit of a banana root there. Went to increase his angle. He was flat on that shot. Cook down the alley. William Perry low to high. The hat trick for Perry. Hey, Quinn, you don't need a banana root when you shoot like William Perry. Wow, with his, with his feet set. And you see the emotional change in this game now. Look at the body language on the benches, the expression on the coach's face. A great double team. Look at Carolina. Stalk the Virginia ball handler, the pinch double team. At the other end, this skip pass is brilliant. Cook draws the double team. Lobs it through the defense, giving his teammate the opportunity to rip it and rip it. Shooters want to shoot. Spray it, William Perry. And Joe Bresci told me, coming out of the locker room, we need to time our doubles. That was a timed double that led to that slingshot. The assist by Cook. Now LaSala. He's a threat. Plays it to the wing, and this one whistles wide off the stick of Moore. Petey LaSala, you could make an argument that he's one of the most valuable players in the country at any position. His impact on a game. So laxreference.com actually has a stat, expected goals added. It's a little bit like war in baseball. It measures how many goals you bring to the table. Number one on that list, Petey LaSala. Number three, Jared Bernhardt. Matt Moore turns, fires, blocked in front. Dixon on the scrap. Now Bertrand. Looking for Cormier, who can't hold on. Bowen thought he had it. And Carolina comes up with it. Alexander. Now Solomon, UNC, can get within two. Not much on that shot. It was bothered off the stick of Kelly. Offensive coordinator Dave Metzbauer barking the signals on the far sideline. Former assistant at Princeton where he took home six titles, one at Carolina, seven rings. He keeps them in a Tupperware box. <laughs> that's so messy, right? If you know the guy, it's so messy. Now it's Trippy. And now Schertzinger, the second unit. Schertzinger, Trippy, McCarthy. They've been awfully productive down the stretch. Kelly working on Soliday, who had seven ground balls in that first half. 32 in blue. This is the best we've seen Soliday look all season. He was picked on a lot, especially in ACC play. Anheim Township, it's uh, Amish country. Strong at the point of, point of attack there with his uh, two-handed hammer check. Gray working on Sawstead who pokes it away. Shot clock in single digits. There's Gray, two seconds. Too high. 
That actually works out well because that is not a delay of game. He got that shot off before the shot clock hit zero. I'll tell you what, field level. Every time Virginia slides, you hear it, you feel it. So what you're saying, Kark, the Velociraptors are real. Fact. We saw it in 2019. Their defense was suspect in the regular season. Turned it on late April, in May. You know what happened when they played Yale, who was the big bully of college lacrosse. They were the bully that day in the national championship. They've been the bully on this May run. Still looking for the first goal of the third quarter. Carolina's got two. Aiken to Laviano. Semi-final hero two years ago. Now Schellenberger, the red shirt freshman. Two goals, two assists for Schellenberger. And a little show of emotion by the former number one recruit coming out of high school two seasons ago. There's no weakness. No weakness whatsoever with one in blue. He can he can feed. He's got the vision to see through a defense in lefty righty. You have no clue what hand this guy is. And he plants his feet and lets it fly. Bun, mayo, chicken pickle, bun. Bun, pickle, Bless mayo. Bless <laughs> me. Ooh, it's naked. The Naked Chicken Chalupa, only at Taco Bell. Friends. Ain't nothing better than sharing a beer with your friends. Because everything great is birthed through discomfort. It's time to get uncomfortable. Let's get uncomfortable. That's when we find empathy. Once we get past our differences, that's when we find empathy. Because real empathy, it knows no age, no color, no gender. Real empathy says, hey, I see you. I feel you. I hear you. I understand you. I may not be you, but I love you. Please? That's what truly matters. This cheesecake in this cup is like my perfect idea of fancy. The business casual of cheesecake. Right. Desserts. Sonic Cheesecake Blasts. Five o'clock PM, loosen your tie up. Two years ago when Virginia won the national championship, it was Matt Moore whose star rose through the back end of the season. This year, it's Connor Schellenberger, a redshirt freshman who sat out last year as the number one player coming out of high school. But look at the footwork. Able to dance his way top side. Eyes are up off the pick from Xander Dixon, and he puts a strike right for Garno. See the celebration behind the goal. Split right to left back to set up a strong hand, and he paints a corner. It's a little bit of everything. Young man who grew up in Charlottesville, actually played one year at Bullis in Washington, D.C., returning to Stab at St. Anne's Belfield. Loves golf, huge Steelers fan. And Kark, you're a big fan of Mr. Scott Schellenberger. The guy is an ace. I'll tell you what, Connor's <laughs> an only child, and Scott never played lacrosse. He was a golfer, went to Marshall, 200 balls a day since the kid was in grade school. And it has paid off, righty, lefty, it's amazing. It's amazing how you don't have any clue what hand he is. And his father followed his son's passion, and he fueled it as well. Scott, though, he can take some credit for being a competitor as well. When he was at Marshall, he told me that he has the record for most wings eaten in a sit-down. 78 wings, 78 chicken wings. Competitive fire right there. Competitive eater. Schellenberger's eating today with two goals, two assists. Missed opportunity there for Carolina. Tucci had a good look. They do get it back off the failed clear. 78 wings. I know our producer, John Kettering, is in the 60s. Man, 78. Ooh. Hot wings, Paul, or uh, was it was it mild? 
Well, he washed it down with a couple pitchers of beer, he told me, too. <laughs> uh, Scott Schellenberger turning into a legend. Perry's got a hat trick for UNC. E. Cook and Anderson, the first midfield most of the year, all fifth-year seniors. Now Cook, the big Canadian. Perry's got the short stick, lost it, recovers. Still time. Perry on the run. Lance Tillman, four goals in the quarters to the Kings. And Lance Tillman brings Carolina back to the three. Wait, he needs to be on the field more, man. End of discussion. This was a great offensive possession. Rapid passing, changing fields east to west, putting a lot of pressure on all parts of the defense. At the tail end, Tillman catches this, and he's just too fast. As his defenser, defenseman approaches him, he hits the turbo. He gets inside, willing to pay the price. Great footwork. This young man out of Colorado can play attack, can play midfield. He's battled back from an injury, and he's the now guy. He's the now player in this Carolina offense. 100%. And the footwork, you saw him land in the crease. He avoided the goal mouth in the inside of the crease. Picked up a stick when he was four years old, as mom and dad told me. Ever since, the game of lacrosse has been his passion. Carolina more competitive at the faceoff X with Tucci in this third quarter. His teammates, Paul, they, what did you say they call him? Dance Tillman. Dance Tillman. You saw the footwork. I mean, that's not easy when you have pressure on your back shoulder area. You're dealing with the goal mouth inside the crease because you can't land it there. And just his agility. You saw it last week against Russia. It's amazing. Shirt singer whips it wide. The back up to Tillman. Winner of this game moves on to Championship Monday. The second semifinal later today, Duke and Maryland. Third meeting of the season between these two. McCarthy offline. Playing with a lot of confidence, isn't he? Princeton transfer. Battled injuries in his Tigers career. Step down shooter with range. McCarthy again using his body, drew the double, tripping. Separation had a great look and just missed. That was, man, everything but the finish. You see the swim move? It's like a bull in a matador. Yep. Ole. Ray back to trippy. Eluding the pursuit again, and he scores this time. One of the great misses you will see. Alex Trippi does the right thing on his first shot. He switches over to his right hand to increase angle to get a better look at the six by six. Misses just by a hair. Look at that move, wow. Bottom pipe misses. Now this time he knows, well, top side's not there. Let's roll back to the left side, Quint. And look how he took something off that shot. Dealt with the defensive pressure, realizes the check's coming, gets him in the thigh, actually, as he releases that, but he takes something off it to put it on the six by six. At the start of the broadcast, we highlighted Chris, a Carolina superstar, but this ensemble cast has been this team's biggest strength. Flag coming against Virginia. Kark in the quarters against the Rutgers, who did that game. Carolina won, not because of its stars, but because of its depth. Its depth and its middle of the field horsepower. You saw Justin Anderson make the, the play of the year from a midfield 
defensive perspective, right? Getting in the hole and selling out, knowing this is the time, this is my fifth year, I'm a 25-year-old dad, I came back for this moment. It was the middle of the field that enabled the secondary scorers to get those opportunities. If Carolina wins, they have to make the plays in between the two restraining boxes. Can Tillman do it again? Working on Murrell, who's not giving an inch. Tillman lost his man, falling down. And now the delayed penalty, so Carolina will go man up. Concern for Lars Tiffany. Blue, 28, one minute, slash. The face-off game has changed. Ground ball's coming up white. Tucci gets slashed on the, on the brim or on the shoulder. Easy call for these officials. Opportunity now for the Tar Heels. William Perry, three goals today and 28 man-up goals in his career. Three and white. The one to watch here. Chris Gray has room, steps down, save! Alex Road. That was ridiculous, that stop. Driving that top hand across his face. Gray got that opportunity because of William Perry next to him, right? They were shading Perry because of his outside shooting ability. Had almost too much room and, and had an opportunity to, to take three or four steps. And as a shooter, sometimes you think too much. Think about the hand-eye coordination from Alex Road. 90-plus mile an hour shot from 12 yards. I mean, it's on top of you in fractions of a second. Just intuition, instincts. You kind of got to guess, but you don't want to give it up. And watch him drive the last minute. Stick just there. Boom. Quick little move. Top hand, silly. Quint, we did his... Under Armour All-American game, right? His senior year in high school. We had some questions about his technique. Well, he's making us look silly. Schellenberger to Cormier. Schellenberger continues to dissect defenses. It's 11-8, a hat trick for Cormier, a five-point afternoon for Connor Schellenberger. An important goal. Because of, the, because of the way this game was cresting for Carolina. Look how spread out North Carolina's defense is. Th this is poor communication off the ball where someone just loses Cormier in the wash. Staring at the ball carrier, Schellenberger, mesmerized by number one in blue, Cormier left uncovered. Deception on that feed. The look away at the last second yeah. enables to give himself and the shooter just a fraction of a second longer because the sticks aren't in the passing lane because of his head. His head is looking one way, his stick goes another. Virginia's wings have been dynamite on the face-off unit. Now LaSala spins inside. Bouncer is wide. Maybe LaSala, not a fogo, which means face-off, get-off. He'll stay on, and he scored 18 goals in his career. Ellenberger and Gray both with two goals. A couple of more helpers for the redshirt freshman from Charlottesville. Good defense on Schellenberger that time. He recovers. Cam Macri defending. Macri 28 and white. Did a good job on Duke's Michael Sowers earlier this year. Xander Dixon now. Back to Schellenberger. Peter Dorno so quick with that first step. Schellenberger feeding it foot to Laviano. The vision cark of number one on full display. It's magical. It's next level. Connor Schellenberger is a redshirt freshman. After his sophomore year, if he was a college football player, he'd be draft eligible. That's not the case with college lacrosse into the PLL. If it was, he might be the number one player on a draft board going pro after his sophomore year because he does everything. His quarterbacking skills are masterful. In the third quarter, 
You saw him from up top, planting and ripping. You've seen through passes. And that time, he spot feeds Ian Laviano, who's the lifeline yep. and the heartbeat of this Virginia yeah. team. A response by Virginia after Carolina had closed to within two. Here is Tucci. Five goals this year. Quint, one of the things we've seen this season from Virginia, they didn't have the depth of scoring at the start of the year. They've developed it. Look, their schedule allowed them to play some people. Their non-conference games, they benefited. The ACC really benefited from being able to play non-conference games to develop a roster. This one hits the pipe. Rebound to Merle. Final 20 seconds. Virginia in transition. Here comes Matt Moore. Laviano's got the backup, 7.4 seconds. Moore has not registered a point since coming back into the game after getting hurt earlier. Quarter number three in the books. The reigning national champions 15 minutes away from playing on Memorial Day again. Connor Schellenberger, a smile so wide, two years in the waiting. Virginia's got a 12-8 lead, and it's a big reason it is the play of the redshirt freshman. I'll tell you, his, sk his skills are so tight. Keeps everything away from the defense, whether it's passing, right on target, shooting for corners. There's a certain simplicity in everything he does. He's been drilled, whether it's wall ball, he said, or grabbing a bucket of balls with a friend and taking hundreds of repetitions, and you see those hours of work. Success never comes before work. Muscle memory. You know what's so interesting about Sunblood. his passing? Watch, every time he passes, gentlemen, Down. he looks off the defense at the last second. Gives him the ability to free his hands, but his teammates then can find that seam in the sticks of the opposing defense are not tracking it. Session blue! Session blue! Cormier was trapped near the sideline, able to get it out. And Virginia with the ball to begin quarter number four. And he shrop, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra down on the field. After no semifinals, no tournament, no season really last year, we have championship weekend and the best field that we've ever seen, the most talented field we've ever seen. Virginia, the reigning national champions. Carolina, the one seed. Down four to begin the fourth. Chance there for Virginia. Carolina took the play to Virginia in that third quarter. Took 17 shots. Yet only come up a plus one in the quarter. Two late goals in that third. Fournier and Laviano both assisted by Schellenberger. Bowen on a hop to Parker Alexander, senior from Dallas. You see, with the lead now, Virginia in control. They're not going to risk things and press upfield in a 10-man ride. They're going to back up, retreat, and take away any Carolina transition. Hark, what's been the most impressive part about the evolution of Virginia's defense? I think it's the off ball. I've always liked the, the individual parts, like the six players on the field at one time. They always have the big, strong athletes and guys that can play physical. It's now coming together as a group, right? Like when we saw them up in the Carrier Dome in late February, they were in disarray off the ball, like not knowing when to slide, not timing slides. Now it's six parts. Chris Gray, Carolina refusing to go down quietly. A hat trick for Gray, the attackman of the year. Fight for top side. At the end of the third quarter, I was in the Carolina huddle. Dave Metzbauer, the offensive coordinator, said that exact thing. 
create a better angle, that extra step. Chris Gray, as he approaches this dodge, right here, it looks like he's gonna shoot. Then he plants his foot and then steps away from the cage. That does two things, frees up his hands and increases his angle. Say that pick set at X creates separation between Chris Gray, Foreign White, and Cade Sawstad, the defender trying to track him. And then the hesitation, Alex Rowe kind of loses his balance in the goal and comes off that near post. And for a lefty, you've got to keep your hip glued to that post. Tucci wins another faceoff. He's now 10 for 22. LaSala, 15 out of 24, has taken every faceoff for Virginia. We have not seen much of Andrew Tyre. Tyre 0 for 3 for UNC today. That's been a two-headed monster, but the matchup where Carolina feels it has the best chance is with Tucci. William Perry and the backup to Tillman, the sophomore from Colorado. They'll go to work on the six foot seven, Cole Kastner. Tillman had the step. Kastner with those long hands and reach, able to stay with him. Not often you see teams unearth a future first team All American in the last four or five games of the season. That's what Virginia has done with Kastner. It's been a challenging year for freshmen across the landscape to class with a bright future, but with limited or no fall ball, limited January workouts. Tillman trying to get top side, the denial by Alex Rode. Failed clear, Carolina gets it back. That's a stinger now. Defensively, gonna be a tad gassed here. You gotta communicate through fatigue. Gray gets free from Kastner, missed the cage. Tillman the backup. 11.09 to go in regulation. Tillman against Ben Weyer, met by John Fox, two-year captain. Now it's Herbert, the freshman. His skip pass intercepted. It's Peel fighting through a triple team for the punt return clear. A oh, sensational stop by Virginia as they, they dig in off the turnover. And this is a critical possession now. Ice their heels a bit, slow it down, give their D a little breather. Perry on defense with Weyer, so Virginia essentially gonna play five on five, but they're not respecting Weyer on offense, so I'm sure he'll run off when Virginia's ready. Now Weyer runs off. Cormier whips wide, 17 to shoot. Bertrand comes into the game for Virginia, the fresh legs. Cormier absorbing the contact. Now Garno gets the step, hits the crossbar. It'll be Virginia ball, and that resets the shot clock. The shot clock resets on a save if the ball hits the pipe or if it goes in. Get a souvenir. Fans are going nuts. Garno can rip it, guys. He can rip oh, it. Right-handed, right over the top, right? Ooh, yep. quick release, too. Garno had two goals in round one. His dad, Ed, a former Virginia punter. Ian Laviano had the overtime winner in the semis two years ago. And the goal to send that win against Duke into OT. There's Schellenberger. 
He's got Bowen's attention now. Long possession for Virginia. Dixon, a very good feeder. Cormier to the cage. And he was in the crease, North Carolina ball. Lengthy possession, a positive for Virginia. Carolina's back's against the wall right now. That was a must-needed stop. You think if Carolina's gonna win this game, they probably have to keep Virginia at 12 or 13 goals. And Carth, Virginia knowing UNC's defense a little tired, so they come with the ride. Get after them. And I think that's been the difference in this game. Virginia's defensive midfield. Guys like Grayson Saude and John Fox and Jared Connors. That's been the difference in this game to me. The middle of the field and the physicality. Virginia has brought it. And Q, that was the weak link for this team at many points this season. Tillman against Kastner. Lars Tiffany telling us it's all about the race to improve. And every time we talk to him during the trajectory of this season, like he was just trying, trying to get the defense to turn the corner. Flag coming against Virginia. Carolina's gonna go man up. Scherzinger. And Sawstead flips it out of bounds. A man up chance for UNC with a chance to get to within two. This is big. This is a huge opportunity for the Heels. Anytime you play Virginia, here's the call. Call to the push. Good call. It's way high up by the neck. Could have been a cross check as well. When you're man up against Virginia, you got to be ready for them to press out. Go rotate hard and get in your face. It's a little more aggressive strategy. Trippy. Gray. Shot blocked. Loose in front. Road is there. Didn't love that shot. Kark, you like that shot? No, and I'll tell you what. Watching that man up advantage for the Tar Heels. The two players adjacent to Will Perry will have time and room. Three and white is the main attraction in regards to Virginia and their defense. They don't want him shooting with time and room. Got to be patient, find the right spot. A yard sale after Kologi had his stick knocked away. And Perry at the other end. Four for William Perry, Carolina within two. That's why. Who would want him to shoot? Not me. You want to get an opportunity with William Perry, you better sell out and ride it back. This is a relentless middle of the field approach and Lars Tiffany knows it is at a critical juncture of this game. North Carolina taking a page out of the playbook of the Virginia Cavaliers. A yard sale that leads to a William Perry specialty. Set your feet, plan it, and sting it. At Domino. William Perry's fourth goal of the game. A refrigerator has never been on fire like this. And Carolina within two at 12 to 10. UNC has been battling uphill since that second quarter. I think they've controlled the play in the second half. They're on a 4-2 goal scoring run advantage. Their bench has got great body language. They're playing with good energy. I think their goalie, Colin Krieg, is going to have to step up and make a big time stop. They put 60 minutes on, on the board for a reason, Anish. That's one thing we've learned in this tournament. It's every second counts. All those AC teams we saw this year, so many of them down to the wire, decided in overtime. 
third meeting between Carolina and Virginia and UNC comes away with the hard fought face off win. It's Marr off the wings. Nothing like playoff ground balls. You scoop it, the whole bench blows up with enthusiasm. Anderson, Herbert, and Perry, the midfield. Cook, Tillman, and Gray on attack. William Perry only had one goal in the first two games of this tournament for today. Herbert, the number three freshman coming out of high school in the traffic and Kaloji comes away with it. Kyle Kaloji, the dean of that defense, almost walked on to Cal's club lacrosse team and has become a fixture on that close team for Lars Tiffany. That's a bingo square. Absolutely. Virginia's clearly slowing this thing down. Now with the shot clock, it's not like they can sit and run the clock out for this game, but one thing we've learned also is you can't stop attacking. You can't stop attacking. Four against Bowen. One of the great one-on-one -on -one matchups in these semifinals. Now Aiken. Fourth quarter, docks time according to Lars Tiffany. He had the game winner against Notre Dame. Cormier, a hat trick today. Lost it, recovers. 15 to shoot. He's an ox. He's got the short stick. Alexander. Virginia can't capitalize. It's Carolina's defense. 18 turnovers. Here's Anderson. He's got that daddy dopamine. Thought about it. Plays it off to Tillman. Streaking toward the cage. A flag is down. And a man-up opportunity for UNC. 419 to go. Heels down two. Who's that rock? 34. <laughs> Technical. Out here with me, okay? We got a ball out here. Check. Great defense. Cormier coughs it up. Off to the races. UNC today with the extra man. Over. Oloji harassing his man. Good look coming here. Over to Anderson. One more. Cook skip pass. Step down. Perry! Everyone in the building held their breath in the backup to Virginia. Amazing passing by Carolina. And how about the anticipation from Virginia's defender to take off for the end line as the player was winding up. Can Virginia clear? This is trouble. Picked up by Carolina. Macri retreating. Ahead to Cook. Carolina's got numbers. Perry scores! Five for William Perry! It's a one goal game in East Hartford. You can't let him shoot, Quinn. Don't let him shoot. Heels playing with great energy. What a check in the middle of the field. Loose ball comes up, Macri. Pump fakes, has patience, circles away from traffic, and they have possession. Look at the placement. Where were all of Perry's prior four goals? Top shelf. He's playing with the goalie. This is his moment.
What's the matter? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. You guys good? You guys good? All right, we're going to go when you're ready. You guys ready? Here we go. Down. Set. Another face-off won by Carolina. The UNC bench showing emotion. That's a clutch face-off win with the extra man. We remind you, NCAA lacrosse coverage continues tomorrow. The Women's Championship, BC and Syracuse, noon Eastern on ESPNU. Jay Alter, Dana Boyle, she and Stanwyck Birch on the call. For more information on the 2021 Men's and Women's Lacrosse Championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. easy face-off wing when knowing that the wingman is not covered because it's an extra man scenario. I believe there's 45 seconds left on the Virginia penalty. If you're the Cavs right now, you, you got to shut off Will Perry. He's just too hot right now. I shut him off and I play a four-man box or diamond behind it, Park. Absolutely. Now he's just in the offensive huddle with offensive coordinator Dave Metzbauer. He knows all the attention is going to be on Curry, so you got to watch the adjacent players, most notably Justin Anderson. So if they shade William Perry three and white, look for 21 and white to have an opportunity to set his feet and let it fly. The ultimate look may be inside, because if a defense does go to that, a shutoff with a four-man box behind it, the crease area, the slot area, is the soft area of that formation. So right in the middle, could be the vacancy. Absolutely, and Metzbauer said as they left the huddle, they can't cover both of you guys, meaning Perry and Anderson. And there's still Gray and Solomon. Cook with the ability with his size to get inside. Anderson plays it to Cook. Perry camped out on that far left wing. It's off the stick of Trippy, a costly turnover with 2.34 to go. Everybody's got a man now. Someone has to beat their man to clear it. Carolina in the 10-man ride! They come up with it! Here's Gray. Virginia snoozing. Rude bails them out with the save. Virginia still has to clear. UNC in pursuit. Fox runs into Bowen, flips it cross field, and Virginia gets it over. Big pass by Fox. What a great play. Doc Sagan, so many clutch goals in his Virginia career. We come up on 90 seconds to go. Aiken sizes up Marr, bumping even more drama into the end game for this one. Now a chance to catch your breath. Timeout Lars Tiffany. Both teams with one timeout left. The 2021 playoffs are delivering. Are you not entertained? Carolina with the ride, the double team in the corner. Ball's on the carpet. They get a second chance at it. But Alex Road, man, left-handed, point-blank range, holds his ground and takes that one off the right shin. Kark, Colin Krieg has had a sensational freshman season. Today has not been his day. Only five saves, 12 goals allowed. You get the sense Krieg is going to have to come up 
with a big stop here in the closing minute plus. And if there's one player in this moment as a freshman goalie, and no one knows this moment as a freshman goalie better than Quinn Kesnick, who won a national championship as a freshman in 1987 for Johns Hopkins. But Krieg is the type of player from a demeanor perspective that can answer the bell regardless of what's happened before. Well, here's the scenario. Virginia ball up one, 27 on the shot clock. Right now, the officiating crew at the table looking at the clock. So we may have a few seconds added here. Yeah, it looks like there should be 28, 29, 30 seconds. Okay, so, so if you're Virginia, you're patient. You're probably going to take this ball to the goal with 15, probably 12 seconds to go in the shot clock. You want to keep field balance. Playing clock and score lacrosse is so important so Carolina doesn't get a run out. Now, if you can get a reset, if you're Virginia, you win this game with an 80-second reset, Clark. And look, they have their speed guys out. Cormier, who's a crafty lefty finisher, not known for his speed in this moment. They took him out and put Connor in instead, Ford and Blue, to milk the clock. Mac Reed will match feet with Schellenberger. The freshman's been sublime today. Schellenberger gets the pick from Laviano, shoots it high. Eight seconds to go, more the trigger man. Carolina will play this straight up. Take arms inside if he feeds the crease. 104 to go. Moore streaking toward the caves. Laviano caught from behind. It comes to Moore. UNC with a chance in the final minute to tie. Moore stays in bounds. The All-American D Mitty. And a timeout by Joe Bresci. 46 seconds to go. Effective defense by Carolina. They're moving their feet well. Laviano late in the shot clock, just kind of with a prayer to the backside. No big deal because Virginia gets back into the hole timeout Carolina their offensive coordinator Dave Metzbauer will dig into his endless library of need a goal plays need a goal formations we're seeing the depth of North Carolina Virginia without a goal in this fourth quarter Schellenberger and Gray have been terrific William Perry five goals for Carolina Park, I'd imagine if UNC can get William Perry a look, they'll take it here. And you almost have to think, Anish, and Coach Dave Metzbauer knows this, he is going to be the player that Virginia will shade. So putting players in an opportunity to be adjacent to him is where they can find a spot. So as much as Perry's been the guy, Virginia's on red alert with three and white. So watch who they put adjacent to Perry. I, I think the catch-22 for coaches in this scenario is, do we attack the matchup? That is, do we attack the weakness of Virginia's defense, or do we stick with our bread and butter and give the ball to our best player, Chris Gray? That's, that's been a question in lacrosse for an eternity. What do you do there as an offensive mind? So what do you do? I like to initiate with my best player, Chris Gray. Gray has three goals today. A couple of assists. Perry, five of nine shooting. 45 seconds to go. Justin Anderson, the fifth year senior captain. And now Gray, marked by Sawstead. Gray turning the corner. Sawstead denying top side. Gray gets some room, shoots it wide. Who's ball? It's Virginia's ball. Saladay, who's made all plays today with a huge race to the end line. Carolina in the ride. Perry knocked it away. It's going to go back to UNC. 
Virginia calls a timeout. Lars Tiffany in disbelief. All Virginia had to do was clear. Seven failed clears now for Virginia. Chris Gray beats his man, gets to prime real estate. Shot goes wide. It's a race to the end line. When the ball goes out, who's ever closest is awarded. You see both players dive. The ball's been long out of bounds. Matt Palin, the official, right on the spot to make that call. This is where Alex Rode needed to show a little more poise. Looked like, was that Perry gets a stick to impact his pass. This, that, that is where Rode probably should have used the crease, maybe gone a little for a little run, for a little jog around the goal, use the crease, and then, worst case scenario, just send the ball down the field. Just gonna muck up and kill 10 more seconds. Either way, one more chance for the Heels. You know, they were out of timeouts. Virginia was reeling, they called that timeout, but it gives Dave Metzbauer and Joe Bresci an opportunity to script something. And it's gonna start with Chris Gray and anticipate William Perry, who's been the guy to start inside. There could be that through pass. Great throws a through pass, as well as any player you'll see in college lacrosse. So when he gets the ball, Lance Tillman has it right now. If Gray can get Tillman to pass him the ball from behind, when he drives, expect to see Will Perry. Tillman initiating. Kastner stays with him, now Cook. Off to the left wing and Perry, five goals today. Perry against Merle. Time running down, Gray. Feeding inside, it's not down! Virginia will play for a championship on Monday. The reigning champs, hang on. Down to Kark. Coach, it's the rubber match. You took one from them, they took one from you this year. You took the big one in championship weekend in the final four. Describe Carolina and Virginia in 2021. Uh, it's a tremendous respect and tremendous rivalry. You know, it's uh, look at what Coach Bresci's ride did to us. You know, we've been the team that's always loved to ride and what Coach Bresci just did to us in that fourth quarter and uh, gave, him, gave his offense more chances. And uh, so uh, you know, we know each other so well, so you just lay it out and let the ball players make plays. And What was this win defined by? Uh, Alex Road stepping up and proving that when it's this time of year, he's going to make huge saves. Our man down stepping up. We haven't, we've had a decent year, but they've stepped up here in, in the NCAA tournament. Um, and, and certainly, there it is, Cole Kastner, right? You know, we got a one-on-one. -on -one. We're saying, hey, let's shut the shorts, let's press out of Jason's, and let, let our freshmen defend this at the end of the game. You mentioned Cole Kastner. Your freshman on the other side, Connor Schellenberger, with two goals and four assists. Describe his quarterbacking skills. Yeah, I mean, what? he's so versatile. He can top dodge, as we saw last week against Georgetown. He can do it from behind the goal. If you want to slide to him, he boy, he just fires darts to our shooters up top. And, and I wish we could have got more of that in the second half. But give credit to Coach Bresci keeping the ball from our offense. And, and certainly Tucci winning a lot of faceoffs there. But, but, uh, but yeah, Schellenberger, his ability to initiate and res understand are they sliding or not. You see that from like uh, a Jared Bernhardt who doesn't need to force things. Connor's got that same balance of understanding. Take a deep breath, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, Paul. We're, we're excited to be in Hartford for two more days. The king, stay the king, at least for a couple of more days.
Connor Schellenberger, our Capital One player. This ball is going to get down. Kyle Decker fielding all the way around from first. Here comes Arnold sliding in safe. And Campbell takes a 5-3 lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, you knew he was due, Jay Walk. Here of the game. His postseason run of magnificence continues. Five points in round one. Six goals in the quarterfinals. Six points in the semis. He's been their best offensive player over these last three games. Tay, the Cavs hold on. They hold on through defense, through some grit. A lot of respect in the ACC amongst these championship programs. Out sensational with 15 stops. Just has his stick deflected enough. Aiken with one-handed scoop, and next thing you know, Carolina gets it. But look how aggressive Merle on the ball. Sawstead on the ball. They get in the passing lane, and Virginia wins with defense. Virginia's offense did not score in that fourth quarter. They had a 12-8 lead with 15 minutes to go. They hang on. Alex Road, 15 saves and goal. Grayson Soliday laying out on the Carolina shot, getting to the end line. He had eight ground balls, a couple of caused turnovers. It's been an up and down season for him, unsung hero. Matt Moore was limited today. One of the best players to put on a Virginia uniform. Went to the locker room with an injury in the first half. Came back, was not really a factor. Yet Virginia plays on Memorial Day like they did in 2019. UVA will await the winner of our second semifinal. Duke and Maryland coming up in about 30, 35 minutes or so. Michael Sowers, Jared Bernhardt, the Blue Devils and the Terps have been the two dominant programs of the past decade, meeting in the semifinals for the fourth time since 2011. That game coming your way. Chris Cotter and company to keep you company. Until then. Thank you, Anish. We will do just that. We'll give you and Kark and Q an opportunity to catch your breaths. Breaths, uh, Car get a chance to dry out a little bit before game two. Maryland and Duke coming up in about a half hour. Chris Cotter alongside Dave Petromala and Matt Ward. What can you say about the end of that game? Wild. So many opportunities were given to North Carolina. I don't know if I want to say given or earned by North Carolina on their sensational ride, but Virginia had a terrible time in that second half just clearing the ball. Yeah, I, I would use the word earn. Carolina did a great job. You know, you take your hat off to Joe Bresch and his staff and, uh, and the heart those kids played with. But uh, their ride in the second half and their face-offs in the second half was a huge difference because, again, in the first half, Virginia dominated possessions. In the second half, because of the ride, because of the face-offs, Carolina got a chance to get in a rhythm, and, uh, and, and they, they dominated the, uh, the possession game. Matt, what does it say about Virginia when nothing was going right in the clearing game almost to the point of being you know, distracting to the overall game. They couldn't get the ball on the other side of the field. They found a way to win this game after so many opportunities were there for North Carolina to at the very least tie it up and send it into overtime. Well, it means you have a really good goalie, right? Alex Rode in the cage, played phenomenal from start to finish. I think it also shows that defensively, they have improved significantly from what they were doing early on in the year, right? They were under constant pressure, and they made UNC's life hard. I mean, UNC had the ball for almost the entire second half. They were winning the ground balls. They were clear, or riding the ball back. They were winning face-offs. And Virginia's defense stood tall, and that's the reason they won. It wasn't the offensive production in the first half. It was the fact that the defense could continue getting up and answering the bell. Well, the last 30 seconds of this game was really emblematic of the entire second half. It was... A chances for North Carolina. They couldn't capitalize. And then Virginia here, Wardo, just trying to find a way to get the ball out of their end of the field. Yeah, it's like quicksand. You know, the whole second half clearing became harder and harder and harder. Now, Road was great in the cage, but maybe some awareness to throw the ball to the other end of the field and make UNC's life a little bit harder. But Virginia 
buckled it up on the defensive end and played good one-on-one -on -one defense, good team defense, didn't allow UNC to get anyone open. And right here, that show, right Side sealed the victory for the Cavaliers. Coming out of timeouts, Coach, Joe Bresci had an opportunity to set something up. What do you think about how North Carolina executed with an opportunity to talk about it before it get taken to field? Yeah, you know, both times they went to the, to the picking game. The first time they came out of the timeout, they actually set a double pick or a staggered pick. And, uh, and Virginia did a very good job. And as you saw, and Matt pointed out right there, um, they do a great job of jump switching on that pick. Uh, I thought they, they did a great job on those la off of those last two timeouts of getting stops. And at the end of the day, you know, you talk about how important faceoffs are and how important ground balls are. But at the end of the day, you got to get stops. And if you get stops, the faceoffs, the ground balls, all that stuff gets pushed to the side. And Virginia got two huge stops when they needed them most. I want to talk about more on the defensive end here in a little bit. But Connor Schellenberger, who continues to show his value, coach, maybe even more so in this game with Matt Moore going out with the injury in the first half. He did come back, but didn't play a whole lot of minutes, wasn't effective when he was in there. And Schellenberger just took over. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, not great to see uh, Matt Moore go down, a great player like that. But in, in all honesty, in, in some way, shape, or form, I actually think it helps Virginia because it puts Schellenberger behind the goal. And as you watch him, he's a natural attack, but I know they bring him through the midfield to get some mismatches. But he had a hand in every goal in the second half, and with the exception of one, they were all with him behind the goal. Yeah, I mean, the, the Virginia offense, when he is the quarterback, flows a little bit better. The one piece that's something to keep an eye on for Virginia in the next matchup, though, is if can more play. Because then, who guards Schellenberger and Moore, right? Having those two attackmen on the field puts a lot of pressure on defense. If it's just Schellenberger, Virginia is going to have to make some adjustments. Agreed. Alex Road was great in goal. Uh, 15 saves for the game. He really is the difference. And it's unbelievable that every May we talk about the fact that he steps up. And why do we not talk about him in, in February, March, and April as much as we do in May? Well, I think it's because Virginia's defense doesn't play particularly well early on in the season. So his name gets kind of moved down to the bottom of the list. But if you watched him in ACC play... He was great every game out. I mean, again, Virginia plays a pretty aggressive defense. He faces a lot of high-quality shots, but this is his time of year, right? He was the MVP of the last championship run for the Cavaliers, uh, and right now 15 Alex saves Rose in the biggest won. moment, and that one save on the defensive end was, was just phenomenal. But again, I mean, you just look at this. He matches you stick for stick. Good luck trying to beat him high, uh, but it's his positioning. He's coming. He's attacking. Uh, he is the glue to that Virginia defense. And when you look at Road, uh, you mentioned when we were watching the game in the second half, turning point. There was, an, there was a ch chance right there where North Carolina had taken control of the game. They had all the momentum. Road makes a big save, and we go the other way. And then, of course, that save in the final minute was unbelievable. Yeah, well, he had two that really stood out. One was on the extra man when Chris Gray had time and room to step down, and he gets, uh, you know, takes a shot high to high, and Road stands his ground, makes a save. And then the other one was them coming around from the back of the goal when they were extra man. So those are two huge saves on the man down for Virginia to get from him, and I, I think they're both turning points. And then obviously this one here, uh, you know, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you, know, you don't stand much of a chance, but what he does do is he does a great job of playing good position, uh, and he puts his body in a spot where he gets yeah. hit by the ball. What we're seeing here are all these turnovers by Virginia, the inability to clear the ball. First half, Lars Tiffany said it when Clark interviewed him. It was about possessions. They had possession in the first half. They didn't have possession at all in the second half, and they were putting their defense in a tough spot. And Ward, you got to tip your cap even more so to that Virginia defense for being put in the tough spot almost the entire second half and coming through. Well, you credit UNC's ride first and foremost. Yeah, I think Virginia was a little sloppy, maybe lacked some awareness. But UNC, to me, all season has been the best riding team. And to have that many extra possessions, they started winning face-offs. Virginia's defense, again, you know, it, it's a broken record. Congrats to them. They, they really were the reason that the Cavaliers are going to be playing for the national championship come Monday. Coach, I got one last thing for you on that. If you, whoever wins this second game between Duke or Maryland, how are you watching the film of this second half, and what are you doing to mimic? I don't know. You can't mimic North Carolina's ride because it's one in a million there, but at least what are you trying to do to take advantage of what you saw today from Virginia? 
Yeah, well, I think you got to be careful first off. You're talking about one day preparation, and you're talking about a Carolina team that has, you know, lived in, lived with the riding game all year long. I had a chance to watch them practice this fall, and they put an inordinate amount of time into the riding game. Mm -hmm. So clearly, uh, you know, it's it's an area where Virginia is deficient. And if, if I'm Lars Tiffany. It's something we need to talk about, and it's something we need to figure out. But the two teams that they could play, whether that's Duke or Maryland, are not, you know, high high level riding teams. It's just not who they are, you know. And at the end of the day, you want to you want to go with the person that got, the thing that got you to the yeah. dance. And we'll figure out who those two teams are going to. Uh, who will, will that one team be among the next two teams? We got Duke and Maryland coming up. Second game of our doubleheader today. We'll get a chance to see. Bernhardt and Sowers will break down these two superstars. Still to come here. Michael Sowers warming up, trying to stay as dry as possible over Pratt and Whitney. 27 minutes away from Duke and Maryland.